Hey, you know, we've been looking at this series, Furnished Faith, and in doing so, this week we're looking at the faith of the criminal crucified with Jesus and the lack of faith of the other criminal crucified with Jesus. Interestingly enough, when we looked at it yesterday, uh, there is this, the one criminal includes the other criminal with him, save yourself and save us. The other criminal, the one who has faith in Christ, who comes to faith in Jesus as the Messiah, the anointed one, the deliverer, the rescuer, um, the true uh, Messiah, uh, the, the king of the Davidic line, the one that is promised and prophesied about and so forth and so on. Uh, and beginning to see in him more than that, beginning to see in him deity, uh, he, he separates himself from that guy. So the one guy is saying, hey, save us. Come, you save us and come down. This guy, a clear uh, demarcation. I'm not part of that with you. Don't you fear God. Don't include me with your blasphemy. Don't include me with what you're doing. I don't go along with that. I'm not with you on this. Uh, so there is this, then the, the, there's the rebuke of that guy, and there's the, the turning to Jesus uh, in faith, asking to be remembered, which is, in fact is like a prayer. Uh, those who would have heard him would be, uh, it's like he is praying to Jesus. And we talked about the, the extreme faith that must have to look at a guy who's dying on a cross, and you're dying on a cross and saying, remember me. He has admitted his guilt. He, is, he has declared that he needs forgiveness. He is turning to Jesus for that. He believes that Jesus is going to have a kingdom and that that kingdom of God is going to come. And that kingdom, as we understand, Jesus said that we are to pray, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what that's all about, the kingdom of God being established on this earth, this earth so that his will is done here as it is where he is in heaven, and that this will be restored in, in what it was created to be. Uh, Paul speaks of that in Romans chapter 8, verse 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, where creation has been held back. God has held back creation. He said it's been uh, limited. It's been held back. It's to futility, not of its own will, but because of the one who subjected it, uh, in the hope that uh, that in, when the scripture uses hope like that, it is a certainty. It is a, a expectant longing, uh, wanting it to happen, looking forward, looking forward to it happening. Uh, it's going to happen. I'm just waiting for it to happen. I'm hoping on it. I'm looking forward to it. It's eager expectation is a good way of uh, defining it, I think. And, you know, Paul speaks of that, that, that they cannot be, creation cannot be what it's supposed to be until humanity is what humanity is created to be, and that is reflectors of God's image and the reflectors of God's worship uh, back to him, His in, and having stewardship over this creation, uh, God's representatives. And so there's this kingly aspect of humanity, this priestly aspect of humanity, and all of that is subsumed under this Messiah, that it is through him that these things are restored, these things are rescued from condemnation and death and sin, and that's washed away, so to speak, by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when we look at Jesus' response, that's the response of the criminal who believes in Jesus. What is Jesus' response to this criminal? Now, he never responds to the other one, but he always responds to the one who turns to him in faith. He says, um, and he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Uh, and he said to him, Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Three things I want to say. When Jesus speaks, it's a truth. Amen, amen, literally, but it means truly, certainly. Uh, these are important words that Jesus are saying. And when Jesus speaks, it is the truth. You can count on it. Um, so he says, this is a fact. This is a truth. Why, can't, why is the word that he speaks truth? It's because he's God. And so being God, what he speaks is a certainty. And it's the amazing thing is this criminal looks at him and sees that salvation rescue is not from death, but through the death of Jesus Christ. And that we're not rescued from physical death. We're delivered through it. Uh, and, you know, we walk through that dark valley because Jesus Christ has gone through it for us, and he receives us unto himself to take us to be uh, with him in that place. Now, the second thing that he says that I think is important is um, the immediacy 
of the forgiveness, the restoration, the salvation. This is an immediate thing. It is an assurance. It is a certainty that today, yes, you're still going to die. No, I'm not taking you off the cross, but you will be with me. This salvation is effective. This has taken place. This is a reality now. I will resurrect you. I will take you to be with me. I will. You will be a part of this kingdom upon this earth. And what position will that be? Who knows? He didn't say. The fact of the matter is, uh, I'll get to meet this guy. I'll get to ask him some questions. And so I'm looking forward to that. There's so many people I want to see, so many people I want to meet. Uh, I want to bow down before the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see him more than anything else. I want I want to know as I have been known. I, I, I desire that. And that's relational. I, that's critically important, this relational aspect of what is taking place here. There is this recognition of who Jesus is. There is this surrender to who Jesus is. There is this surrender to the healing ministry of Jesus, and that is he is the one who heals us of, of our sins and delivers us from death, and that death means separation from God, not this physical death, which is really nothing. Uh, these bodies are not, the scripture says, uh, flesh and blood will not inherit uh, eternal life. And so we're going to get a new body, a body that's fit for the new creation. I'm looking forward to that. How awesome is that? I hope you're encouraged by that as well. Um, I hope that you have come to terms with the fact that you are physically going to die. There's, there's nothing for that. Uh, the, the, all of us are going to go through that. We're going to go through the doorway of death one way or another. And I believe even if we're here, uh, when Jesus comes and raptures the church, when it says that we will be changed, uh, I think we will, that physical death of that body in that moment, you're going to experience that. I'm sorry. All of us are going to experience that. That's part and parcel of this corrupt flesh that we live in, and it's not fit uh, for, it's not a body that is fit for the new creation that we're going to get to experience. Um, I'm looking forward to getting that new body, and the older I get, the more I look forward to it. Uh, but also, I'm looking forward to, um, yes, being with Jesus, and I guess I should stick with that before I get to what else I'm looking forward to. That relational aspect of it, being with Jesus, knowing as we have been known, having that relationship with him in a perfect sense, and knowing God through him, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, experiencing the Father, all of this that we get to do, all of this that is that relationship that is restored, that spiritual relationship, that reality which takes on more than spiritual. Um, it is a personal. And so Jesus says today you will be with me. It is a personal relationship that is guaranteed, that extends into eternity. Uh, it begins, yes, begins right now, but it's immediate, but it extends into eternity. That relationship is sure. That relational aspect with Jesus uh, is a certainty, and it's an eternity, and it will not go away. He won't cast us away. It will grow and become more and more and more. And one of the wonderful things about uh, the marriage that I have with my wife Mary is getting to know her through all of these years and, and discovering new things about her personality, discovering new things about her, that even if I uh, had an eternity just to discover her, I could never discover everything about her. And that's the beauty of that. We have an eternity to explore this relationship with Jesus Christ and to be known and, and to know him and to be known by him. And through that, it's taken to another level. We talk about our relationship with Jesus now, but I wonder how much of that is really um, very minor compared to what we will know, how we will know him and how we will be known by him and what we will experience. Um, because the, the Revelation speaks of getting a new name that only he knows and that kind of thing. How cool is that? This nickname that Jesus has had for us uh, and we get that when we stand before him. He's going to call us by that name, and how marvelous is that? And I think it's a name that will describe us, a name that speaks of who we are, not as how we have been, but who we are, uh, being made perfect, being made whole uh, through him, through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, 
And so that's what that is talking about. Today, the immediacy of it, truly, it is true. And the third thing, uh, that the personal, relational aspect of this, you will be with me. Now, the location of this, that's the, the fourth thing that I want to say about this. He says, you will be with me in paradise. And uh, the Greek word for paradise is paradise. You didn't know you knew that Greek word, did you? Well, you do. Actually, it's paradiso, but it's a transliteration into English. It's not translated, it is transliterated here. What does it mean? Well, it means garden. It means an enclosed garden. Uh, it is the word that is used in the Greek translation of the Hebrew text in the Old Testament in many places, but more specifically, and I think this is what is a reference to, uh, it is the Garden of Eden. That is, in the Hebrew word is gone. Uh, the the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible uses paradiso uh, for that Hebrew word God, which means garden and enclosure. There's some a Persian in, influence in that as well. Uh, but the idea is, when Jesus says you will be in paradise, the, the Garden of Eden. Now, what's significant about the Garden of Eden? Well, that's where God uh, placed the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, uh, first marriage and they were they are given the um, vocation of showing forth the image of God because that place, this earth at that time, is a temple of God. And we are the image that is placed in that temple to show forth the form of God to the rest of creation. And we are to rule over it. We are to be uh, kingly stewards of all of this. Uh, this creation, and that is lost in the fall of humanity and the embracing of idolatry rather than embracing uh, God. As Paul said, we embrace the creature rather than the creator, uh, and claiming to be wise in that, we actually became fools and invited death and embraced death as well through sin, and that is through rebelling against God, rejecting uh, God for uh, ourselves and rejecting the worship of God for the worship of idols, uh, which allows the dark powers to have power, influence, and control over us. And so when he talks about paradise, he is talking about that being restored, that new creation. Clearly that's what's going on. Clearly, he's not talking about floating disembodied in some spiritual state somewhere. That's a Greek Hellenistic philosophical idea. There is nothing like that in New Testament theology or Hebrew theology. It simply does not exist. Paul said to be uh, unclothed. Oh, that's just unheard of. We're going to be clothed with a new body. And um, these new bodies are going to get to explore this paradise. Now, does he mean to say, that, oh, well, you're going to have to wait until we get to this paradise. No, clearly it is today you will be with me in this paradise. So I do believe in some sense paradise is this um, intermediary, temporary, heavenly state as we think of heaven. But even there, I, I personally believe we're going to have a body fit for heaven, although it won't be the body for, we'll have a temporary something because we don't know how to exist without that. We, we, in fact, were created to express worship through taste, touch, smell, through those senses, and we don't know how to exist without that. To be disembodied to us would be uh, so bizarre as not to even make any sense to us. So I do think, think in some sense, now can I prove it? No. Not really, although it does seem in heaven and revelation that these are bodies these people are in. Uh, they're not disembodied spirits that you can't see uh, or that one could not uh, speak with or one could not touch. It seems clearly that's not the case uh, in the heavenly realm. And so I do think there is a some sort of bodily form that we're going to have. I don't know what that is. Not the perfected body we're going to have in the new creation. And so there is that sense of being in that paradiso and that paradise. Uh, but by the way, the, the rabbinical understanding is some of the rabbis talk, talk that God took paradise up to heaven uh, and that it is the tree of life is still there. Certainly, Revelation seems to indicate that. 
um, that, that correlates with that. And there's going to be a recreation. The tree of life will be restored because the new Jerusalem is going to come down. Heaven and earth connected again as it was in the creation. And so that is a powerful image. And what we hope for, what we long for, what we get to experience. And I'm looking forward to that. Hope that you are too. And it's not pie in the sky by and by. We get the foretaste of that now. We have that citizenship now. And we live that out here and now uh, in expressing both the kingly aspect in that we are to be good stewards over this creation and, and the priestly aspect in that we are to be uh, leading creation in worship and worshiping the one true God. And uh, that is, yes, when we come together as a congregation and worship, certainly. But it's also every day as we do things, whether it's for me picking up a guitar and playing that and giving God praise and thanks for the enjoyment of that, uh, whether I do it well or not is not the point. It is the enjoyment of making music. It is that and giving God praise and giving him adoration for that. It is, um, to, I've often talked about tasting dark chocolate and, and marveling at the wonderful taste of that for me and expressing that to God. Uh, and to worship in that and enjoying that in our senses and what we touch and what we smell and what we taste and what we hear. Uh, all of that is to be an expression of worship. Every bit of it. All of it. And that's why Paul says, whatever you taste, whatever you touch, whatever you do, uh, let it be a praise unto God. Let it be a worship unto him. Uh, whatever your hand finds to do. Uh, do it unto him. And so that we get to do that now. We get to experience that now and express that now. And that is a form of worship. Um, and so I pray that you know that that's how much God loves us. That's how much that he, Jesus loves us in the sense that he gave himself for us, suffered that for us, experienced hell for us, to secure this for us. And even in the midst of dying himself, he has risen above that to express concern for this one who has looked to him in faith and to assure him, even though you're going to die on this cross, that's not the end. There is so much more. Today you will be with me in paradise. And we have this to look forward to, that extending into the new creation, God recreating this earth and this universe and restoring it to be the temple that it's supposed to be in that we uh, are his image in this and to express that worship unto him. Well, listen, it is a powerful statement. It is a tremendous statement and it is an assurance. And I hope that you're assured by faith in Jesus Christ that you have that certain hope that you will be with him. He will come and receive you to himself. That death is not the end. That that is something that opens a doorway into this new existence. We're just beginning, really. It's not the end. It's more like the beginning. This is like practice. This is like playground. This is where we're discovering things. We're actually going to live it in a more vivid and real way than we could possibly imagine in the new creation. Our taste and senses, our hearing, are all heightened. And the older I get and the more deaf I become, the more that heightened hearing is going to be marvelous. We will hear sounds we've never heard before. We'll hear music we've never heard before. We will taste things we've never tasted before because it will be as it should be without the taint of sin and death and corruption. And we will experience like we were supposed to experience. I think colors are going to be more real. I think everything's going to be more concrete. And it's going to be unbelievable. We have the foretaste of it now, and I long for the reality of it, and I'm assured of it by faith in Jesus Christ, depending on the Word of God. Well, I pray that you know that. I pray that you know that God loves you. I pray that you know the love of God through faith in Jesus Christ, that you've been born again. I pray that that's true for you. Hey, listen, this is the last one we're doing this week. I'm going to be tied up all day tomorrow, um, doing some things with my mom, uh, and I just won't have time to do a video. But we'll jump back on it Monday. And listen, if you don't have a church home where you worship, at least right now, uh, at 930, that's our worship time. And then 1045, we have small groups and Sunday school classes. 
I would love for you to be a part of that. I'd love to invite you to come and be my guest here at Troy First Baptist Church. 9.30 is worship, 10.45 small groups and Sunday school. Don't forget, um, Saturday beginning at 4 o'clock, we have our trunk or treat here at Troy First Baptist. We just want to give back to the community. We want to do something for kids in the community to say, hey, um, it's not all washed out. And um, and to, to, to show forth the love of Christ to the children of our community. And so... That begins at 4 o'clock Saturday, and um, we'll run till we run out of candy or run out of people, one or the other. And we're not doing the hot dogs, the hot chocolate, all this stuff this year. We just didn't feel like we could be responsible and do that. And so we will be doing um, the trunk or treat, and that starts at 4. Again, I pray that you know that I love you. More importantly, God loves you. He's given His Son, Jesus Christ. You might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy <laughs> indescribable right here and right now. I pray that that's yours through faith in Jesus Christ. Hey, listen, till Monday, God bless you is my prayer.